Welcome. I'm Halcyon, and this is Hug Nation. Today, I want to talk about how to throw a kick-ass Zoom dinner party. That would sound whimsical and gimmicky a year ago, but you know what? I think this is important information. I think we need to learn how to have online gatherings in the most heart-opening and connecting and loving way possible. And I have been a part of a lot of Zoom gatherings over the last almost four months. In addition to having daily gratitude circles, twice a day, every day for the last almost four months, I've also attended uh, a couple weddings uh, that, that have been pretty, pretty special. And so combining all of these gatherings that have really worked, uh, I wanted to go through my tips and tricks for throwing a kick-ass Zoom dinner party. First of all, you know, if you're gathering with a few friends, you don't need to have all this rigmarole and all this stuff that I'm talking about and planning and invitations and etc. Just, you know, invite some friends, set a time, hang out in Zoom and laugh and do whatever. One guideline I give towards any Zoom gathering, however, or any gathering at this time in the world is put some boundaries around current event conversation, unless that is the reason you're getting together and what you want to talk about. It is very easy right now to slip into a regurgitating of the latest stats or news or updates that you have seen that are frustrating or fear mongering or whatever. And it's very easy to slip into that common ground and fall into that pit of just retelling the, the latest news that you've heard. So make an agreement that that is not what we're going to do. You can talk about your feelings and experiences related to whatever's going on, your personal experiences, but avoid just resharing news articles as if you're in a face-to-face, -face, you know, Facebook feed. Click share, share. No, don't do that. Say, I'm feeling this because of this. But that's, that's for all gatherings. On to the dinner party. So the first thing that I suggest you do is figure out a theme or topic. Because I've been throwing these gratitude circles, that is the theme that I'm the most acquainted with. That is the one that I've been having the most fun with is a gratitude circle. People come together and share something that they are grateful for or a few things that they are grateful for. But there's a bunch of things that you could do. You could get together and everyone shares a poem. You could get together and just shares wins of the week. You could share, uh, people could, you could say, let's go find some interesting fact in history and we'll each share something. But because of the limitations of Zoom, where one person has to talk at a time, I encourage you to figure out some topic or theme where one at a time people can share, at least for the beginnings of the gathering. Next thing you got to figure out is your invite list. I recommend getting you know between 5 and 15 people to do it, but let's say you could do it with a larger group. You can go two routes. You can pull together an existing group of friends that you have and just set a time and have them all get together at that time. Or you can, you know, select a diverse group of friends that may have not met each other. These are the exact same decisions you would make for a dinner party of any sort, but it works when you bring them into Zoom with certain adjustments. So if you do bring in friends that are, do not know each other, you might want to add to the beginning of your gathering some form of introductions. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So after your invite list, then you're going to figure out your menu. What food are you going to serve at your party? And when I say serve, what I really mean is what are you going to ask people to make on their own and then eat together? I went to a wonderful online wedding where in the invitation they shared what the the dinner choices were and then they sent you the recipe for whatever it is that you chose. So that is a awesome way to kind of 
get over some of the, the distance feelings of being apart and trick ourselves to have a shared experience. We all come together, we all eat the same food together as if we had just gone to the buffet table uh, that was in the same physical space. So we're, we're, we're transcending time and space into this gathering of intention. A good idea is pick some food that uh, is easy to make so you don't intimidate people, unless your friends are such that would really love to cook something intricate. It's also nice to add plus a salad and or salad because pretty much anybody can find a way to fit their dietary guidelines into a salad of some sort. So they can always join and just eat the salad. Plus they're making the salad so they can define that however they want and eat without issue. You could also do something like um, everybody pick up Thai food and then meet at this set time. Or you could also do, let's just show up and have coffee together, bring coffee or coffee and dessert, or just chips and salsa. But having some kind of shared experience tricks your brain. Um, then you can pick beverages. You can encourage people to have their bar stocked with white wine or white claw or gin and tonics or something so that you are all kind of having this shared experience together while apart. You can pick a dress code. I've been to gatherings where the attire was pajamas. I've been to a gathering where there was a, a formal wear. You could also pick a color, say everyone dress in white or wear your burner attire. Again, as you look around the room and you, you are eating the same things and dressing up and you are having this communal experience where the only thing that is not really present is physical connection, physical presence. The geography is the only missing ingredient. Everything else you have together and in common. So, okay, you've, now you've got your topic or your theme, you've got your people, you've got your meal, you pick a time and you send out your invite with all of this information. Uh, letting people know when they need to be there. I recommend telling people to be prompt that you'll open the room five to 10 minutes in advance and close it five to 10 minutes after that time because it really is distracting as people join the room once you're, you're starting to create a vibe together. So you are going to be the facilitator as the host and there is additional requirements in, in hosting a Zoom gathering that are, might be a little different than that of a, a, a in-person dinner party. So first you want to welcome people, make sure people know each other in a brief way, and, uh, and then explain some ground rules. I recommend saying, we are not going to record this and whatever we talk about tonight is gonna to be confidential and shared only between the people who are here. Does everybody agree to that? And have people type in, I agree, in the chat or uh, give you a thumbs up in their camera. Depending on your topic, maybe your topic is everyone bring their favorite joke. It might not be that much of a deal. People feeling like uh, afraid to be vulnerable, but best case scenario, you create a space where people do feel comfortable feeling vulnerable. And so making sure people know that this is as you build trust within this container, it becomes more and more sacred as you as that trust increases. So then let people know that because of our time restraints, set that in advance. You might, depending on the size of your group, you might want to say an hour, maybe even 30 minutes. Encourage people to share for two to three minutes each. And while we're not going to be too much a stickler about it, be aware that everyone wants a chance to speak and to just, you know, that if someone is going on too long, you might interrupt them or mute them to get their attention, but that is in no means, you know, to make anyone feel bad, just to, so that we can have uh, a, a, an opportunity for everyone to, to share what they want to share. Best way to do it so you don't have long pauses is as facilitator, you call on people. If, however, while someone is sharing, 
you are compelled and say, oh, I need to go next. For example, someone is sharing appreciation for Bill and you're like, I was going to share gratitude for Bill. So can I go next? I want to kind of piggyback on that. You can either like raise your hand or, or put something in the chat room. Otherwise, you just enjoy your meal as other people are sharing. If people say things that you want to go like, right on, yeah, that's so cool. Avoid the verbal affirmations and confirmations. Try to limit yourself to visual things, whether that be a woo, raise the roof, or big thumbs up, or nodding, or the ASL applause. Because of the way the Zoom limitations work, if, if, if you speak up and say, ha ha, that's hilarious, then the microphone goes to you, the person speaking is silenced. If someone's watching on their phone, then the visual is actually pulled away from the speaker to you, and it's just, it's, it's a much less uh, fluid experience. So it takes a while to get used to it, but once you start doing it and, and you're like applauding, saying right on, woo, um, and plus being muted is the best way to make sure that even if you do go, ha ha, you don't pull the mic to yourself. So encourage people to mute themselves and then practice these kind of things. Letting people know, hey, please be as present physically and mentally as possible. Obviously, if your kids are screaming or your house is on fire, go deal with that. But turn off your phone, avoid looking through tabs on your browser, and just be here. The process of being in a digital gathering is, it requires more discipline to be present than in a physical gathering. So I think you have to remind people, let's really focus on, on listening and being together for this time. After you explain the, the directions, then uh, what I like to do is have a non-religious grace, a little moment of general gratitude and have people join hands so that say, make sure your arms are going beyond the width of your screen and you look around the room and it looks like everybody is holding hands and then say, we are so grateful to be here together, to have this moment together, to share with one another and spend this time and space. Aho or amen or Scooby Dooby Doo. Something that is pretty innocuous, but just a reminder of being grateful. Grateful that we have roofs of our head, food in front of us, and friends in our lives. Amen. Then begin. What I like to do as people are, as you call on one person to the next, have a talking stick that actually connects people. So what you do, with the dinner party, tell people an invitation, show up, bring your food, and bring a salt shaker to the table, whether or not you like salt. When I say, hey, Bill, it's your turn. What are you grateful for? And then I would reach above the camera and hand him the salt. And then he reaches above the camera and grabs the salt, sets it down, does his thing and I go awesome thank you Bill that was so beautiful so appreciate that now next is Wanda and then can you pass the salt to Wanda then Wanda and then Bill passes to Wanda above his camera Wanda grabs it and it, it creates this really beautiful connection of these individual spaces and and connects them through this a bit silly but you know, surprisingly fun little game. So when everyone is shared, then you come back together. Depending on your time, you can do a few things. One, you can say, does anyone want to keep sharing and just keep going? You can also say, let's break up into breakout groups, uh, breakout groups. Then because I'm a big believer in hugs and hug nation, I always have people at the very end hug themselves and imagine that we are all hugging each other and sinking into this embrace and feeling each other embrace us and just take a deep breath in together and say thank you all for coming. That is then the official end. Say thanks everyone if you have to go or you need to go. It's been so beautiful. Thank you so much. If you'd like to stay, stick around and chat all you want. Some people love just having a long lingering conversation. 
Some people like to have their 30 minutes or their hour and then back to their schedule and back to their life. But having, making sure you have a end time so that people know how long they have to stay versus how long they can optionally stay makes soothes people and makes people feel more comfortable with being present. I am a believer in the power of these gatherings. And with every bit that you hear from another person, whether that be a gratitude or a story or a joke or whatever, your appreciation of life in humanity gets amplified. It's one of those things that is really hard to measure or explain about what's happening now when we're in isolation so long. Our human experience is stunted in ways that we don't really realize because we're only experiencing our life. And clearer and clearer it is that the human experience is not just experienced by the one, it is experienced in community. And as other people share aspects of their life, it broadens your experience, it widens your lens, and it reflects back all these little things that are going on in your world that you may not have paid attention to. For example, with gratitude, a personal gratitude practice is awesome. But what I didn't realize until I've been doing this on a daily basis is that my personal gratitude practice falls into a rut and I, I see what I see and I'm grateful for the things that I'm grateful for. But when I hear other people say things that I hadn't occurred to me but are aspects of my life, it helps me see more and more and more to bring in these props like food and salt shakers. And it's, it's a little extra effort, but it will kind of open up that withering thing inside us that is craving for more connection, more community, um, more of reminders of, of the beauty of the human experience. So I hope you have an amazing Zoom party. Feel free to invite me if I can make it, I will be there. And feel free to join us every day at noon and six for a gratitude circle, which is a much lower key version of this. We do not do meals every day, although we do occasionally. But uh, you can join us without any preparation any day at noon and six o'clock Pacific time. Listen to some gratitude, share some gratitude, and, uh, and have that heart expanding experience. So. Thank you. I love you. Wherever you are, give yourself a hug. Appreciate this body that you're in and imagine that you are being embraced by me and by everyone that you have encountered in the last week. Everyone that has been a part of your life, even if they're nowhere near you physically, your family, loved ones, and feel those arms squeezing you and be embraced by us. Feel yourself connected to others and to the one. Let ourselves sink into that place beyond the me into the we. Let's just take three breaths together into that place of oneness. In through the nose, out through the mouth. On behalf of Grandpa Caleb and all the love warriors, happy Hug Nation. I love you. If you enjoy these transmissions, do me a huge favor and share them. Give them a thumbs up, give them a like. Let people know that this is worth listening to. It would make a big difference in my life. Or join my email list and get to know all the new things that happen, including when my next round of coaching will start at list.hugnation.com. Actually, just search Hug Nation. You can find my YouTube channel, find my iTunes, all the good stuff. I love you. What did I do with it? Hold on. I can't tell where the camera angle was there. You might be, uh, it might be clear that I am not wearing pants right now. But uh, if, if you couldn't see that on camera, then I, of course, am wearing pants. <laughs>